Welcome to Life and Faith from the Centre for Public Christianity. I'm Natasha Moore. Well, it's been widely assumed that colonial missionaries were a disaster wherever they went, destroying local cultures and exploiting Indigenous peoples and all in the name of God. But Robert Woodbury, who's an Associate Professor of Political Science at the National University of Singapore, has spent the last 15 years meticulously researching a very different outcome of the missionary endeavour, and it's quite a surprising one. Professor Woodbury was in Sydney recently, so of course we at CPX seized the opportunity to speak to him. And today on Life and Faith, we're bringing you some of the highlights from that interview. I began by asking him about the way that his research tells a story no one would expect, that missionaries have actually had an overwhelmingly positive effect on the places they went. Well, most people haven't tried to measure the impact that missionaries had, and I've tried to do that very carefully. And when you measure the effect that they had, it's actually quite positive on the vast majority of things. Um, And there's lots of historical evidence for it, too. So it's not just statistical, but it's also if you look at the history carefully. But we get a lot of our ideas about missionaries from novels and movies, which tend to portray them very badly, um, and from sort of popular histories that are sort of post-colonial, anti-colonial, and tend to lump missionaries in the same group of people. And so then they get associated with a lot of bad things. And they did some bad things as well. They're real human beings. But um, the average effect of them was quite good. Can you explain a bit more? What, what have you found in your research? Well, I've done a lot of different research. So I look at the role of missionaries in the spread of mass education and printing and newspapers and voluntary associations and colonial reform when they made colonialism less bad. Um, and then look at the long-term impact of that, both directly and indirectly. And you can explain about 11% of current GDP in Africa, Asia, Latin America, Oceania, with the historical prevalence of Protestant missionaries. You can explain about half the variation in democracy. You can explain significant differences in life expectancy and infant mortality, educational enrollment, literacy, book publishing, newspaper circulation, voluntary association membership, lots of things. Well, that's a formidable list. It is a formidable How list. How do you make that link? It must be an incredibly complicated process. It's a very complicated pr- process, um, and it depends which argument you're making. For printing, I would look historically, and I would try and figure out who the first person who was a local printer from each culture or society, what's now a, now a country or a language group, and then I find out where they got their fonts. So then I can trace those to missionaries, and I can sh- prove that there's a link with missionaries. Um, and then I can measure the effect statistically. The difficulty when you're trying to say missions had this effect is you have to remove the effect of why missionaries went where they went. So you can think of it like it's easy to get to a good port for both missionaries and traders and other people. Um, So you might get more missionaries in places that have a good port. So they didn't cause that port to be good, and they didn't cause the economic development that happened because it's a port. Similarly with health. Maybe missionaries want their children to survive. So they go to a place where they think their children are more likely to survive rather than a place where they think their children are going to die. Or even if they went to both places equally, more people die in the unhealthy place and more people live in the healthy place, so you end up having more missionaries in the healthy place than in the unhealthy place. And then if you just look at at one period of time and go, oh, more missionaries, more health, and you think they've had the cause. Well, maybe they did have some cause, but maybe health influenced where they went, or maybe trade access influenced where they went. And so I have to try and remove those two things. How have you gone about proving that, you know, you say that missionaries can account for half the variation in democracy outside of European countries? Right. How can you be so sure? Well, I'm not sure it's exactly half. I'm sure that it's a lot. There's a difference. So I can show that once I control for Protestant missionary activity, a lot of other things that predict democracy go away. So it doesn't matter how many Europeans, it doesn't matter how many Muslims, it doesn't matter whether you're a British colony, it doesn't matter how much oil you have, it doesn't matter all these things that predict democracy until you control for Protestant missions. Um, They go away. So I can at least show that other people's arguments don't work. I can also show that the relationship between missions and democracy is so strong, I'm not claiming they caused all of it, but if they didn't cause any of it, you have to have this sort of crazy world where this thing that's predicting democracy, but that is not missionaries, is correlated with democracy as another measure of democracy, and more than twice as correlated with Protestant missions as another measure of Protestant missions. And I find that very implausible, 
that something like that exists but is unnameable, meaning you can't tell me what it is. If it's not missionaries, it's something so big that we should be able to name it. And you say they're specifically Protestant missionaries. Yes. This isn't a universal effect across all It is missions. not a universal effect. Um, why is that? Protestant missions introduced a number of things which then other religious groups copied when they competed with Protestants, but didn't do, at least until recently, when they didn't compete. So for Protestants, it was crucial that people read the Bible in their own language, um, which meant they needed to have a written form of that language if it didn't exist, which meant that everyone needed to be able to read, including poor people and including women, which other people didn't traditionally do. It meant that either they needed to have printing technology or they had to turn that printing technology into mass printing technology. So for example, in China, they had printing more than 800 years before Europe, and they had movable font metal type about 70, 80 years before Europe. But it didn't have the same transformative effect until the 19th century, when Protestant missionaries start to transform printing into a mass technology and really transform how books are available in places like China, Korea, and Japan. Then if you look at Catholic missions, they did an amazing job with education in places that they competed with Protestants. So if you look at Catholic education in Australia, or the United States, or Ireland, or India, amazing educational system. And they've stayed in it longer than the Protestants. Protestants have given it over to the state, and now I think Catholics have a more positive effect on education than Protestants do in that respect. But in places where they didn't have to compete with Protestants, like Mexico, or Spain, or Italy, or Portugal, they didn't do mass education. And it's not that the Catholic Church didn't have influence in Italy, they had a lot, but they didn't have the threat of conversion that was related to both Protestant mission education, Protestant religious education, and public schools that were set up in Protestant societies and had a religious component to them. So even though the cultivation of democracy was not the reason that these missionaries went to these places, right. it's a direct result of some of their beliefs that these Yes, it's a direct happened. result of some of their beliefs and also the religious competition that developed and caused other people to copy these behaviors even if they didn't convert. So even if they weren't that successful as missionaries? As converted people, yeah. They understand. were still very successful in transforming societies. If you've just joined us, you're listening to Life and Faith from the Centre for Public Christianity, and we're hearing from Robert Woodbury about his remarkable research into the impact of Protestant missions around the world. How has this work been received? When I first started, it was received, well, it depends by who. I would give talks and people sometimes would stand up in the middle of my talk and yell at me. Um, or at the end of the talk and yell at me. When the I more polite types would wait till the end of the talk to yell at <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> um, when I tried to publish this, my article on democracy was rejected at the American Sociological Review and the editors refused to tell me why, what was wrong with it. Um, the only negative criticism that was public is someone said that it made them angry, which is not an argument. Um, then when I submitted it to the American Political Science Review, no one said anything wrong with the things I did. They just said, oh, and do this, and do this, and do this, and do this. So it took 192 pages of supporting material for an article, which is like writing a book. And then it got accepted, and then the editor had his graduate students read it, and then they got angry, so then they accused me of making up the data. So then the editor revoked my acceptance and um, said I had to make my data public. I had to send all my statistical models and my coding rules to him so he could check them, and check them with pulling out variables and adding other variables. And, um, then told me an ad, to add a table based on his runs to my analysis, which like, these are kind of things that like, I've never heard of anyone happening to them in their life. Eventually, though, it got accepted um, after, I think it was the sixth round of submission. Then afterwards, it's done very well. So it's won a bunch of awards from the American Political Science Association, Best Article in Comparative Politics, which is the largest section, Best Article in Comparative Democratization, Best Article in Global and Transnational Sociology, Best Article in Sociology of Religion. I can go on. I mean, there's more. It's won eight. So it's done very well. Yeah. I mean, congratulations. How do you account for that initial very strong resistance? It goes against a lot of what people think to be true. Mm -hmm. And they've heard it so many times that they think it has to be true, even though they don't have evidence for it. So like if you just keep on hearing things and you just hear them and hear them and hear them, then you think they're true. And then you like, this can't, po this can't possibly be true because missionaries are bad. Like they're just destructive and they just destroy culture and they're just bad. So part of it is that. I think most academics are pretty secular. So they wouldn't want to be missionized. They wouldn't have someone try and convert them. So they don't like that idea. And then they just haven't thought about it and they don't know anything about the history. You know, so 
I think there's that type of resistance. And then also these effects are so large that they should be a little bit scary. They scared me when I first ran my results. Um, if you take the results seriously, it really radically shapes how we view what leads to economic development and what leads to democracy and things like that in a way that causes a lot of rethinking. So people recognize that. So there's legitimate reasons to be a little cautious, and there's also sort of bigoted or reasons to be cautious as well. Are you saying that you know, the stereotypes that people have about missionaries, that they've been culturally insensitive and destructive, that they've been complicit in colonial abuses, are those just completely mistaken? They're not completely mistaken, but they're exaggerated. So missionaries were people of their day, of their time, just like we are, and we're shaped by the dominant cultural things that we live with and the things that we're taught. But generally, they were at the egalitarian humanitarian end of the scale. Um, so missionaries believed that everyone was created in God's image and that everyone could be saved. And that meant that people were basically the same thing. Now they tended to have a cultural hierarchy. William Carey and other famous missionaries, this was quite a repeated theme, would say, well we used to be barbarians and then we became Christians and now we're more civilized and so anyone else can do this too. Now, they were competing against people who had a more racialized view of differences between cultures. So the founder of anthropology, a guy named James Hunt, he criticized missionaries severely for thinking that black people were capable of abstract thought and that he thought educating them was a waste of time. Then later on after Darwin, you get um, in his son and other people, they had this idea of racial progress. So whites were at the top of the evolutionary tree um, well, this is what missionaries were taught in school as science, and this is what they were criticized for arguing against, and they were told that they were just like backward and stupid for believing that people were the same species or having the same comparability. Is it true to say then that we see a mixed picture with missionaries? So some of their beliefs are in tune with the times they lived in, and others, like the basic dignity and equality of every human being, those were completely out of step with the attitudes of their contemporaries? Missionaries varied a lot in how culturally sensitive they were. They were very important in terms of protecting indigenous people from exploitation and from being killed by other whites, which happened in Australia and others. But they were monotheists and they did not like anything that uh, smelled of polytheism or idolatry or promiscuous sexual behavior, things like that. And so they came off strongly on issues like that. They were also reforming, and they tried to reform things in other people's cultures. So some of which we might think of good or bad, but it was not necessarily culturally sensitive. So in a place like India, when a man died, his wife was supposed to burn herself alive on his funeral pyre, at least in certain areas of India. And missionaries thought that was bad, and they made a whole campaign against that, which created a great deal of resentment. Similarly, they made a whole campaign to raise the age for the consummation of marriage to age 12. Um, now, they were involved in that type of activity in England and elsewhere, but that was so controversial when it actually was passed in India that it was never enforced. Um, and it was a huge factor leading to Indian nationalism, and Gandhi was even involved in protesting that. So if the main effect of missions was negative and just destructive, you wouldn't expect to find the really strong positive effects that I find in my statistical analysis. You know, you'd expect the, where there were more missionaries, where they lurked, worked longer, and where they were more free to do whatever they wanted, you'd expect conditions to be worse. And on tons of outcomes that I've looked at, it's much better where they worked longer, where there were more of them, and where they were more free to do what they wanted. Um, so we don't want to negate the fact that they did some bad things and that they weren't always as sensitive as would have been good and they might have been more successful if they were more sensitive. But um, we don't want to be ethnocentric towards missionaries in ways that we accuse them of being. Mm. So when we speak negatively about missionaries, we need to try and understand them and actually understand what they did rather than just, oh, I know about missionaries which could be like, oh, I know about black people, or I know about white people, or I know about Chinese, without really understanding. That was Robert Woodbury speaking about the huge and unexpected role that colonial missionaries have played in the spread of democracy around the world. Thanks for listening. Join us next time on Life and Faith.